Good morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Santa Clarita In-Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm my Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And our guest this morning is Dr. Mawa Kalani, who is the Medical Director of Palliative Care at Holy Cross Hospital. And unfortunately, I think she's stuck in traffic yeah, and probably. not able to be here right or maybe now. Or so, maybe with a patient. Well, that's possible. You know, that's possible. I mean, there's, people don't pick a time of day to get sick or get healthy. This no. is, And, you know, sometimes they pick a time of in life where it's the end of life and that's what dr kalani does it's that's uh, right her end of life care so that's right. uh, you know we we are aware that she's doing a mightily important uh job in in our community and uh we're really proud that uh we have her thought process but also her uh her uh, knowledge to be able to uh, help seniors out. And, you know, end of life is a topic that uh, I think we're starting finally to um, at least have that discussion over because before in the past, you wouldn't really always know what your parents, for instance, would want to do if when they pass away i mean sometimes they don't have a will and sometimes they don't you don't even know if they want to be cremated or not or how they want to be buried or where they want to be buried these questions were never asked but now what's opening up isn't that's it? very true it is and i know that russ and i have a uh, a living trust and all of the uh information about how we want to be cared for and what we want done with us after we die, um, it's all in there. And mm -hmm. it's good for the uh, children to know. Yeah, it well, the, the, you know, the <clears throat> and caregivers wonder, but when you're the son or the daughter, it, it makes it difficult to broach these questions with your parents. And sometimes your parents are not ready to open up over that because they might be 98 years old and yeah, I still have a few good years left in me so <laughs> let's not worry about that right now do you hear that that's true because i feel the same way mm -hmm. but I you plan you, to live a great many more years you, and i you plan just, on it you just never know nope. uh, what's around the corner and i think uh, one should be prepared because there are there are legal obligations if you happen to have some assets like a house uh, savings uh, anything that might be out there uh, that is worth something um, you know your your family will be asked to look at it and and if you don't have decisions made they'll have to figure out how to divide it up and you know dynamics right. of families are usually pretty good but sometimes you'll have families that are yanking this way and that way uh for part of those assets and you know it makes a, a scene and you, you know you don't really need that plus you know and in, in addition to that the division of the assets there's also a a tax liability well probate that, yeah, that's which very people true. people don't even think about that's very and true. you know at end of life uh all these things i will tell you when they're in place um and you know it's the end of your life um you you have that comfort knowing that that everything is going to be smooth everything is taken care of legally and emotionally and you don't have to deal uh in your mind that oh something you know little tommy who's now you know 70 years old you know needs to be taken care of as well and he might be an adult but you know there are just things that you know you don't want to be afraid to put in place now as opposed to waiting and then it's just a shambles when things uh as you get older so well i know because i had i had a similar experience with both of my parents mm -hmm. and um they didn't have all of that put in place and um my dad called one morning and said babs i need you to come home I need you to come home and help me make some decisions and take care of, of, of your mom. And I thought, holy Hannah. I, holy what? Holy Hannah. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, I thought, whoa, here I am 3,000 miles away. And 
what am I going to do? So I got a plane ticket and made arrangements for my children to be taken care of. And I went back there. And my mother, she had been to Duke University. Now, mind you, this was in the early 80s, very early mm -hmm. 80s. Just a few years ago. And um, I think medical science hadn't, hadn't come up to where we are today. I mean, there's so many things that occur now as far as health care is concerned that nobody knew anything about, even in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And they thought my mom had dementia. And because when I got there, my dad had not been able to cut her nails. My brother, she wouldn't let him do that. Her nails were like this were about four or five inches four long. or five inches long wow and and her hair hadn't been washed in months wow and um dad you know he he wasn't well himself mm -hmm. and he couldn't handle her and that's why he called me in a panic babs i need you i need you to come home and while I was there, we arranged for my mom to go into a, uh, a nursing home where she could be cared for and properly cared for. And that was, that was in November, and we got her in the home. And that broke my father's heart because he didn't have anybody to take care of anymore. Yeah. And he was at home by himself. He lost his purpose. He lost purpose in life. And he died that following February. Mm -hmm. And it was such a shame. But they finally found out what my mother's problem was. She had a massive brain tumor yeah. that was pushing, pressing on certain areas of her brain where she couldn't function properly. Mm -hmm. And um, I... It's just amazing how things have progressed and care can be given now mm -hmm. and obstacles can be overcome because we have the wherewithal, the knowledge, mm -hmm. the medical knowledge especially. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would have made a big difference had they still been alive and the same thing happened at this day and age. No doubt the technology from even the 1980s has changed. Oh. Uh, you know, during my residency, uh, you know, in the 70s and 80s, uh, we, I remember I was at Irvine and we got a CAT scan. And we thought, wow, this is unique. We, you know, it was a, a California school. So, mm -hmm. you know, we got, there was money there to get a CAT scan. But of course we'd ordered a CAT scan and we go down and look at these really cool x-rays, but, you know, and we learned how to deal with that and use it. But, you know, we'd ordered the CAT scan and maybe five days later, we get the, we'd get the uh, CAT scan done. And then it would take like three or four days to get it read. So it might be a whole week adventure you know just uh ordering it so we were you know parsing our times and moments to make sure that you know we were ordering it on the right patients but we, and we did you know there were some cases where and i recollect you know uh, we saw a patient and uh the i was the resident and my intern both of us felt that the patient had like a brain tumor and uh, uh, had a cancer from somewhere else, yes. but we thought this person has metastasis to the brain. So, you know, we we told the attending, we think we need to get a CAT scan. So this, I think, was one of our first CAT scans at UC Irvine. Oh so we do the CAT scan, and uh, it did indeed take about five days, but we immediately went down, and when they had to develop these x-rays, you know, boom, there was a lesion. And we there knew, it was. We knew that uh, right. this gentleman uh, was unfortunately going to have to face different uh, uh, treatments than what he had expected. But uh, technology has changed. and oh, we really, it has. We really have moved in the right direction relative to that. But because this technology has gone so far, um, you know, it has allowed us to live longer. And because we do live longer, there are certain parts of life that also evolve and remember that uh we're seeing more um 
people with dementias and Alzheimer's and things like that. And, you know, we, right. we didn't see it as much and maybe because people didn't live as long. And now I, we are living longer and we're seeing it more. That's true. And I think people or family members didn't recognize it as right. being dementia mm-hmm. or Alzheimer's and didn't know what to do or how to do anything to help the situation out. Whereas now it can be diagnosed mm-hmm. a lot easier mm-hmm. and a lot quicker and more can be done to help yeah. those patients and those those people with dementia and Alzheimer's. And um, that's something I would never want to get. Well, I think that would be that we, would be devastating. And we never know, Barbara. We can never know, you know, when when it's developing. I mean, the, our family members might recognize that, which is great. But as yourself, you you might not see that, and because you don't see that, you're not prepared. So the best thing to do, and Dr. Kalani would be here telling us this. She would say, be prepared. That's do right. things in advance. You know, think about. If something should happen, whether you develop dementia or have a stroke or have a heart attack or something that can then end up having a profound health effect on you, know, maybe even a memory effect, you have to be ready for that. So for our seniors who are listening, put everything in place right now. Absolutely. Start, start to do it. You know, you everybody's afraid, oh, I'm going to have to spend money, go see an attorney and all this. And yeah, you depending on what you have, you might have to do that just Absolutely. to make sure things are done Absolutely. correctly. But if you have that much, then do that. But if you don't, you can still go online. And, you know, the caregivers who are listening can also go online and help their loved ones out in getting prepared. There are documents that help us as doctors when a patient comes to the emergency room. Uh, tell us what that patient wants, even though they might not be a good historian. And you want that information. And it, sometimes when it's not being given to us, you know, we have to do what the law says. We have to save lives. That's that's our duty in, this, in the state, yes, by law, that's, that's right. our duty. And that's the Hippocratic Oath. We will save lives and try not to do harm. But when people come in, when they have the paperwork uh, with them, uh, paramedics typically and usually now are told to look for that paperwork or loved ones bring that in. Sometimes that we can use that as a guide to determine how we are going to treat you and make sure we are following your wishes. Your voice can still be heard if something catastrophic happens. But you have to set that up beforehand, set that voice up earlier. It's like a tape recording, but you put it on paper, (laughs) right? That's correct. That's correct. Well, you know, talking about that takes me back to to my father. And for, for so many years, I tried to get him to talk about his past, what he did, because he had such a varied life. And I gave him a tape recorder. I said, Dad, when you're sitting there, talk into the machine. Tell me about your history and what went on in your life and my mom's life. And he never did that. Mm -hmm. And the only things I remember now are the things that he told me. Mm-hmm. You know, when he was alive, and I've jotted all of this down. That's great. I've jotted it all down, and of course, a lot of it I remember myself. But when he was alive, he was an incredible man. He was um, personal valet to King Edward, who abdicated the throne. Mm-hmm. And, you know. One of the most interesting parts of oh, world history. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and a love story in itself. Oh. Absolutely. And it, it's it's just amazing. But like you said, you have to prepare. You have to write things down, mm-hmm. you know, for your loved ones, your, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, so that they know what you want and not leave it up to them to make these difficult decisions. Because... I, it was a difficult decision for me when I had to go back and take care of my mom, yeah. you know, and make arrangements for her. And um, that's rough. It really is. And it just shouldn't be left 
alone. It should be discussed way beforehand. So, right. you know, we're, we're putting it out there because we know our seniors. We're involved in this community in so many ways, whether it be medically or with the senior center, you know, in the housing developments that have occurred here. All of this we have been involved with. And we mm -hmm. know that difficult situations arise, but you can prevent it from happening if you're really really a little bit more careful and listen and heed the warnings that others are trying to do. So we've been uh, talking about end of life and this is the end of this segment for the moment. Yes, it when, is. We, when we come back, maybe we'll talk about the beginning of life. That's mm. a great idea. Yeah. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio with my co-host Barbara Cochran on your hometown station AM 1220 KHTS.